Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, nice to see you again. If this is your first time, I'm Uber Mormon. Uh, I stole that. It's kind of a pun on Nietzsche's Ubermensch or the Overman. Basically means like beyond or through or like... It's kind of a cheeky way of explaining the fact that uh, I've absorbed all of the powers of the Mormon church and I've I've embodied them and moved past it, and so I now have the strength of a grown man and a little baby. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you all about uh, the four mistakes that I made when I left the church and how I, I, you can hopefully avoid them. Uh, so I'm just going to get right into it, and here we go. Number one, I tried to convince my family to leave as I was going through this process. Now, there are a couple reasons why this is wrong. I'm going to try and spell them all out in a, in a way that makes sense. Uh, the first one, it was simply too early in the process for me to be having these types of discussions, uh, to be telling my family members the things that I was still only like half able to digest because it was all still so fresh for me. Uh, I didn't do a very good job of explaining the point of view and I mostly just came across kind of angry and so uh, I wish I could go back and just kind of unhave all of those conversations because I think what happened is if I try to talk about it now it goes so much better uh, I wish that this was the only um, like one-on-one -on -one form of confrontation that they had with me about the church now because now I'm able to be much more emotionally detached where I'm not putting pressure on them or just coming across like a big ball of anger that I was so uh, I wish I could go back and just not have those conversations with them the other thing and this is this is kind of the bigger point is uh, there's kind of this contention between Mormons and ex-Mormons uh, Mormons will often say things like Hey man, it's cool that you decided to leave the church and all, but I don't need to hear this. I'm not interested in this. And uh, what the ex-Mormon will often say, or what I've heard a lot of them say is, Hey, I was taught to share the truth, and now I'm sharing the truth. I don't know what the big deal is. And um, it's facetious, and it's fun, and I get, I get it. I really do. But uh, I think that in that case, the ex-Mormon is still playing by Mormonism's rules. You're still, when you take a step back, you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm not following what they say is the truth anymore, but I am pushing this idea that I need to evangelize and share this new thing that I think is the truth. And that's the underlying thing that Mormonism is also teaching you. Unless you're able to do it in a way that's more productive, uh, I think that in most cases, uh, it's more reactionary and you're just trying to play by their rules, but play against them. And I don't like it. I personally don't like it. I don't think it's a good look for ex-Mormons because it, it kind of shows how reliant we still are on them. And I would like us to be our own people. A criticism that I'm kind of anticipating, although I'm not really a big enough channel to get this, um, there will be people who are either thinking or saying in the comments, you're saying that what you did wrong is you tried to get your family to leave and then you made a YouTube channel about leaving. That seems inconsistent. That seems a little hypocritical. No, okay, my, my YouTube channel is not about getting people to leave. It's about finding people who are in that really painful gray area where you kind of have decided that you need to leave the church, but you haven't quite figured out where you're going or anything beyond that. You just kind of know, well, I'm not that. Um, I remember a lot of really painful nights and days just kind of feeling lost. And I want to kind of extend an olive branch or extend some kind of like a, a life-saving device to the people who find themselves there because it sucks. And so this channel is nothing more than a way of me saying, uh, it gets better. I've been in your shoes. Th there's happiness on the other side of this. Just don't lose hope. Just take it one day at a time. That's all this is. So I'm trying to just connect with people who are kind of stuck at the moment. I'm not trying to convince anybody to leave. If you watch my channel and you feel more secure about leaving, that's, that's great. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. But I'm not trying to I'm not trying to approach people who have no 
desire to leave and make them leave. That's not my, that's not my goal here. So there you go. Really quickly before I move on to number two, uh, if you like anything that I've said so far, uh, please hit subscribe or like this video. My channel has been seeing a crazy amount of like growth and publicity lately and that's really cool um, but still the majority of people who like or comment or watch uh, according to YouTube are not subscribers so if you like this uh, please hit subscribe please 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 number two I assumed that I knew the intentions of my family members who were choosing to stay Mormon and so let me back up a little bit and say it this way you have a scale right reasons to stay in the church, reasons to leave the church. Um, my reasons to leave the church was getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And I assumed that because this thing right here is a reason for me to leave, that it should be a reason for somebody else to leave. And you, you have probably noticed this in your life as well, just on the flip side. You've probably noticed a lot of members who are saying, well, this is the reason that I stay, so why can't you stay for this reason, right? It's the same logic. People have pyramids of value. People have hierarchies of things that are important to them. And if you and another person, let's say your reason for staying is, uh, or your reason for leaving rather, is because you've researched a bunch of things about church history and Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, and you don't find it to be true anymore. However, on the other hand, somebody, uh, you know, lost a loved one, feels that this is their connection to them, and so they want to stay Mormon so that they, they think that gives them the best chance of being with this loved one in the life after this one or in heaven or whatever. You two are operating from different value places, and so your reasons for things won't be the same and the math won't add up. So uh, just be more patient with people who decide to stay. Assume the best. Assume that it's because it works for them and not because they've read everything, but they just want to be racist or bigoted or sexist or patriarchal or whatever. Okay. I, d I find that to be a very off-putting trait uh, uh, in anyone, uh, especially in people who have been through the trauma of leaving a religion. So that's number two. Number three, I tried to speed this process up. A video that I made last week, I talk about how my first doubts happened during the election where Trump ran against Hillary. For a lot of you who can easily remember that, uh, that was 2016, right? I didn't officially leave the church until 2021. From 2018 to 2021, I was just in this gray area. I was just learning. And I tried to speed it up and I tried to just like, I'm an atheist now, or I'm a this now, or I'm a this now. And um, the truth of the matter is that uh, I'm still constantly arriving at different places. And I'm happy that I am. I find that l the space of time in between when you decide the Mormon church is not for me and this new thing is for me, all of that space in between those two points is where you're the most curious. It's where you learn the most. It's where you're the most compassionate. It's where you're really kind of your best self because you're you're a kid again. You're ignorant again. And I mean that in a good way. You know, you're ignorant again. You don't know what you don't know. You're just questioning everything and, and you see everything for the first time in a new way. And so if anything, I, I almost wish that I could extend that. You know, I wish I could stay curious and I wish that I could maybe just decide that I'm never going to decide anything. The last thing that I did wrong when I left the Mormon church was I assumed that everything that they had taught me was wrong simply because it came from them. Um, and that was not a very open-minded way for me to approach life. Um, it, now, I'm not saying that the things that they teach are inherently right either. I'm not. I'm just saying that a broken clock is right every now and then. And, and there's kind of a, a practical reason. If you're trying to have useful conversations with your Mormon loved ones, there's a practical reason to not just burn it down and say that everything that they do is bad, blah, blah, blah. And it's this. Um, if your family members who know that you have left can hear you say, that's a good thing that they do. I, I appreciate that about them. If they can hear you say that and you actually mean it, then when you voice 
criticisms, they will be more receptive to them. And so you're not manipulating. You're just trying to call balls and strikes. You're just trying to be honest. That's all that anybody can really ask from you uh, in in a situation as crazy as this. So I'm grateful for like how hard I learned how to work and serve people and just like, you know, maybe that was a my parents thing. Maybe it was the church thing. Maybe it was a little bit of both. There are clearly good good aspects of my upbringing that I'm grateful for that uh, I think it would be dishonest of me to pretend like I didn't get them from the church or pretend like I'm not happy that I have them. So yeah, there they are, all four of the the biggest mistakes that I made when I left the church. Now I want to talk about one huge good thing that I did when I left the church, and it's this. I talked to people who were in the same boat as me. I had a couple friends who were going through it felt like a very similar trajectory and a very similar timeline. And we would talk almost every day for like 30 minutes and just like vent to one another. And that was the most helpful thing because all the, it it made, it gave me an escape or like a pressure release valve for all the times that I was with my family that I was like, Oh, I'm just biting my tongue super hard. It gave me a place that I could share those feelings in a healthy way. And I think that it made a huge difference in my um, overall well-being during that time. It made me feel like, okay, I'm not crazy, which is kind of the point of this channel. I'm not crazy. Other people are going through the same things. And then it was also kind of like, I would sometimes feel like I was a failure for leaving. Like, oh man, I just couldn't make it work. I just couldn't endure to the end, blah, blah, blah. But every once in a while, I would realize that I didn't feel that way about my friend. You know, I didn't feel that way about this guy who was just having honest doubts. I didn't feel like, uh, yeah, you just can't endure to the end, can you? And so it helped me have a more positive outlook on myself to be like, no, I'm just a human going through human stuff and that's all fine. So, um, yeah, if you can, if you know people who are in a similar stage of leaving uh, that you are, then that would be a huge help. Highly recommend it. And um, yeah, so that's the video, everybody. Thank you for watching. Again, if you like this stuff, please hit subscribe. Please like it. Uh, It would be very, very helpful if you did that. And if you have other uh, content ideas or something that you would like to talk about, then, you know, I'm always open to chat about those things. And uh, you know, to connect during lives and stuff. I haven't done it live in a while, but I want to. So uh, that should be happening soon. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Uh, Have a great day. Always brush your teeth and uh, goodbye, everyone.